Welcome to a Celtic state of mind where we will be asking, what's the story, ball and goalie? Uh, today, my guest is none other than Jim Simonetti. Welcome to the studio, Jim. How are you? I'm well. Thank you, Paul. What about yourself? I'm shocked and stunned and bemused at the behaviour of another one of our players breaching the, the COVID rules. Jim, it's so, so simple. Um, you know, everybody knows what the rules are. We've all stuck to them rigorously in relation to for months and months being on lockdown, desperate for football to start up, not just from a selfish perspective, but to keep the game in business, to keep Celtic in business. And you've got players breaching the authorities' rules on COVID. What was your initial reaction when you heard what happened with Ball and Goalie travelling to Spain and then failing... And, and failing, failing to, to uh, you know, know quarantine, quarantine on his return to the UK. So, so disappointed, Paul. So disappointed. I'm, I'm actually, uh, I'm actually gutted for all the Celtic supporters, Celtic Football Club, and the worldwide Celtic supporters, and and for the restrictions that's been placed on uh, and everybody over this period of time. And for, for them to go and do that. But first of all, I would like to say, Paul, that I'm proud of the way that Celtics come out and made the announcement that they apologise to every club. Mm -hmm. Every club. Every and club. they're apologising to all the fans. Now, why why would someone go and do that without informing the club, without coming back and informing others? Stupidity. Stupidity. Arrogance. Stupidity. Arrogance. Selfishness. You know, all so, so disappointed. Absolutely. So disappointed. We're in a season here, Jim, where we're going for a record tenth title in a row, and we're talking about player stupidity in relation to the COVID. Something that's affected every single one of us. Yet these people think they're above the rules that are being set by the Scottish government. They won't listen. They won't listen. Uh, and people, people. Uh, I, I mean, I, I'm the last person that would criticise. Uh, a player uh, openly and outside a dressing room. I've been taught that, that you take care of things inside the dressing room and you keep it there. But this here is just honestly outrageous. I mean, we've been hammering on here, Paul, uh, on a Celtic state of mind about how important this season is for the history of Celtic Football Club, club for the history of the Celtic supporters. Actually, I feel a bit foolish sitting here praising them. Uh, the other day there, they were going to be more professional than any other other club. They've got their self in order. They know what to do. They know how, know how to conduct themselves. And this guy comes out and does this. It's it appalling. beggars belief. It's appalling. We've got plenty of comments coming through. Please uh, send your comments and your questions and your criticisms uh, or support uh, if that is how you're feeling via YouTube, Twitter or Facebook. And first up is Gary Doonan and he's sending the message via Facebook. And Gary states that this should result in an immediate termination of Ball and Golly's contract. Strict guidance has been given to all Celtic staff and reinforced just last week due to up-and-coming European games. Now, there's there's people um, who may look at that and think, well, is that harsh when compared to what happened with Lee Griffiths? Jim, what's your thoughts on that? Should I mean, Celtic have already confirmed it's a HR disciplinary issue as we speak. Can Celtic go through that process and not result in Bolingoli's termination of his contract? I'm not sure. I, I don't know, Paul. I'm, I'm, I'm no for people uh, losing uh, uh, their, their, their jobs. I'm no for people uh, being being uh, 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 dismissed. I'm no for. Uh, I, I like to look at constructiveness when things like this happen. But I'm sitting here trying to put an HR head on, trying to put a a northern Celtic supporters head on. I actually don't know. It's difficult to defend in any way, shape or form, isn't it, Jim? Oh, it's, it's very difficult. I mean, you, you mentioned Lee Griffiths here. Lee Griffiths has went to uh, the party uh, with, with the family and it's been out in social media. He hasn't left the, the, the country. 
and he's no come back. I, actually, I don't know if he did, did. Should the two of them be be treated the same? Poss possibly not. Each and every in, uh, individual uh, thing that someone does is going to be treated separately. So let let's put Lee Griffiths to the side for the time being, uh, Paul. Let's look at the man who's been out of the country, not telling the club, came back, never self-isolated, turned up to play the game, Yeah, came on as a sub. Put everyone at risk. Everyone at risk. Everybody at risk. And that there is hard to comprehend. Even if you don't wait, you see, I've made a mistake, I haven't out of the country, boss. He's disgraced Celtic Football Club. He has. This is worldwide news. Aye. Uh, because of his stupidity. Aye. It's embarrassing to the club. And the club have come out and have co condemned Bolingoli's behaviour, Jim. I mean, when you look at the word, and it's a strong, strong statement from Celtic, they've apologised, like yes. you say, to all clubs, plus the authorities. They yes. confirmed that Bolingoli travelled to Spain and in failed to inform Celtic that he was travelling to Spain and then he failed to observe the quarantine restrictions yeah. you know on his uh, return they've called it irresponsible beyond explanation and they've basically called it stupidity and that there will be immediate action uh, on Bolingoli I think there's going to be a lot of pressure and like you say you don't want anyone to lose their job but under the current circumstances Jim that's no, what he's facing no but, but Paul you're right but I don't think he, I don't think they're stupid I really think it's irresponsible they're not stupid these, these players uh, 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 aren't stupid that is totally irresponsible eh, what he's done when I say I don't want anyone to lose their jobs I'm talking eh, that everybody's got eh, a livelihood but what, what he's done is He's put everybody else's livelihood. He's put the the fu possible future uh, of Scottish football going ahead. If Nicola Sturgeon decides I've had enough, he's all. She'll close it down. She'll close it down for further notice. The fans, the fans will become irate. The club will become irate. The players from all clubs in Scotland will become irate. And who they point the finger at were giving them an excuse to say it was Celtic. It was Celtic being irresponsible. It's no just Bolingoli who's responsible. It's Celtic, they would say. It's us, collectively. It does. It drags the whole club into that. So now, disappointed, Paul. The whole way that this be has been treated in terms of Scottish football has been shambolic, Jim. Yeah. You look at the, the breaches by Rangers in relation to the, the testing in the, at the initial stages. You look at the behaviour of the Aberdeen players, eight of them. You know, yeah. and then you look at Lee Griffiths and Bolingoli. Now, by the way, these are the breaches that we're aware of. Correct. You know, and you think to yourself, how irresponsible are you? If you see someone else being the fall guy and you've not been, you know, maintaining the the restrictions, etc., then yeah. you would need to then ask yourself, am I am I being responsible here? But he's gone out and done that even after the Lee Griffiths uh, fra fiasco, you know, the previous week. And then he appears, he actually appears on the pitch on Sunday, much to my amazement, he appears yeah. on the pitch on Sunday and then this, this story breaks. Jason Christie states that Bolingoli has no respect for his fellow professionals. My kid knows the rules and she is 13. Yeah. I just don't understand it. There's a frustration among Celtic fans, Jim, this morning uh, after the breaking of this news. And, you know, for the second time in a week, Scottish football's governing bodies are meeting with ministers to explain the COVID breaches. Aye. I mean, Celtic could get hit really, really hard after this, this latest breach. Aye, you're, you're right, Paul. But the thing is, we cannot, as a Celtic supporters and as a, any representative for Celtic, cannot criticise any other club now. We we cannot criticise that they have done this, they have broken the rule here. We have done it mm -hmm. in the front of the world. Yep. In front of the world. Okay, Lee Griffiths um, uh, last week, but he was probably, Bowling Goal was probably at the country. Mm -hmm. But uh, it beggars to believe. Where was he training? Where, well, where was he? How long was he out the country for? I'm absolutely astounded and astonished at this conduct. Where was he? Why is he not reported to training? That would have been one of my questions. Where is he? Why is he not here this morning? Well, the question has been raised 
from Gary Doonan. Thank you for getting involved, Gary, uh, via Facebook and everybody else who is viewing us live on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Please comment, let us know your thoughts. And Gary is saying that the worst part of it, uh, trying to keep it a secret and ends up playing on Sunday. Right. Also, I would like to know why he was away and for how long was there no training on last week? Well, that's a, that's a very good point, but I don't think there wasn't any training that there would have been training. But if, if you're a professional footballer, and you're going to leave the country, you need permission from your club and from your manager mm -hmm. if you're going to leave the country. You need permission for the club. You need that, no matter what. And I'm sorry, Paul, if I'm coming across in a way here that uh, that I'm, 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 I'm showing my disappointment because I can't hide it because I know what this means to us all. Mm -hmm. The togetherness that we spoke about at the beginning of the week. Yes. Now you're going, I spoke about all this. Try to put the message out to other fans or the other fans that's not on a, a social media talking to the, the fans throughout the world. They must be feeling the same way. They must be so, so disappointed. So disappointed. Absolutely. Now, Steve Martin is uh, joining us from St Andrews. Welcome yeah. to the show, Steve. Uh, you're commenting via YouTube. Hail, hail, boys. Listening well. Crab fishing in not so sunny St Andrews. The whole mindset of ball and golly needs questioned. To not be honest with the club is the worst. Sheer stupidity. Well, the word stupidity has been mentioned by Celtic. What you're saying, Jim, is he's a responsible yeah. adult. He's a professional footballer. Yeah. He's at the highest level of professional football. Right. And, you know, to throw it away is stupidity. The guy knew what he was doing. Yeah. Like he's booked a flight to Spain correct, and then he's failed to inform the club and then failed to uh, observe quarantine restrictions on his return. He's no stupid when he signs his contract. He's no stupid when he, he understands uh, he, the game and he, he, he takes the field to play. He's no stupid. He's no stupid. He's irresponsible, Paul. Completely he's irresponsible. totally irresponsible for what he's done. And he's, at, I would actually say this is possibly, in my opinion, this is one of the worst things and embarrassments that's happened to Celtic Football Club in years. Yeah. In years. Mm -hmm. In decades. Maybe taking it even a way back to when the guy put the jersey on and then went and signed for the other side of the city for Rangers. I, I just can't remember anything as embarrassing as this. It's totally embarrassing. It's completely embarrassing for the club. And as I say, on a global scale, this is global, global news. Chris Sutton, former Cell Chris Sutton, stated today that there can be no future for Bolling no. Golly. He needs to be uh, sacked. And, you know, this is the thing. It's as serious as that, Jim. If, for example, there was an issue, a family issue, and, and Bolling Golly required to go somewhere, Definitely. you go to the club, you seek permission, and then the club knows the quarantine issues went upon your return. You know, there's businesses still flying from country to country. It's just, you need permission to do it. Paul, Celtic Football, see if it was a family issue. Celtic Football Club would have looked after him. Exactly. They'd have ensured that he got his flight across to where he was. They'd have looked after him wherever he was in the, in, in the world if it was family issues. They'd have got him back after his family issues. They'd have quarantined him for his family issues or for his problems and then brought him out of quarantine when it was ready, when he was safe. But to do this, to actually just turn up and say, I'm here to play. It's Honestly, it beggars belief. Flag flagrant disregard for the trust that the club's put in you, for the support and the investment of every supporter. This player and the others who have breached the, the actual rules, these guys are putting the entire future of Scottish football at risk. That's how serious Correct. this is. Paul, you're talking about investment now, right? It's not about his investment. No. It's not about his investment. It's about the, the investment that's been put in a Celtic football club in the last 10 years. The last 10 years, the investment we won in the first the first league, the second league, the third league, all the way up to the ninth league, it's all that investment. And this guy could possibly scupper the whole, the whole investment lot. and what we are trying to achieve for historical reasons as well in the in the season 2021. 20, this guy could have hit it and knocked it dead. He, he possibly could knock this dead. We, what the repercussions are for Celtic 
I don't, I really don't know. After for today. Scottish football, Jim, because after the meeting, uh, where the, the authorities are going to try and explain the breaches, you know, that a decision could be made that's above, uh, you know, their area of responsibility. Yeah. They are beyond that decision. And if it's made by the ministers or, you know, the, the government, then it's game over. Mm. It's game over because Scottish football, we were looking for fans to come back to the stadiums maybe in October. We were pushing for the middle of October. Great. Peter Lowell came out and, you know, issued his comment on that. No chance. We won't see a football game until January now. I don't think so. And um, listen, whatever, whatever he, he, he Peter he decides to do, uh, he, he'll do it with a, a, a professional. A pro he'll look at it professionally. He'll look at the circumstances and what's happened. I know we can maybe get a wee bit emotional uh, here talking about it, but he, he'll be he'll be relaxed. He'll be speaking uh, about it with, with Neil Lennon, the, the directors, and whatever outcome they decide that's got to happen, then we all stand by it. As I say, I don't like anybody losing uh, anything, uh, work or whatever in life, but whatever the board decide and Celtic Football Club decide is to happen, I would support it. Let's go back to some of the viewer comments and we have a few in from Jed Sweeney. Uh, I know that football players get a bad rap for not having two brain cells to rub together, but this guy is a poster boy for that. And obviously the image of footballers is not being helped by this kind of behaviour. It's got to be said, unbelievable. What has he been doing for the past five months, uh, Jed Sweeney? Obviously referring to the fact that we all know how serious this matter yeah. is. Uh, and Jed is stating that he is extremely angry, as I think most of us are. Uh, meant to have had two days off. Uh, that's a message coming in from Facebook. So Celtics players had a couple of days off last week. And uh, obviously, or I'm guessing, that's when Bolingoli has taken advantage of that by leaving the country. Uh, the season won't go to 38 games. The cup competitions won't conclude. Fans won't get near a game for months now. This is the point we're making. The knock-on effect, Jim, is this type of behaviour is, is going to continue for months. Aye. Well, th this is not going away. This this is this is definitely not going to go away. We're all looking forward to getting back to Celtic Park and to go to the away games as well. Everybody. Everybody's looking forward to that. October, October, we're saying to ourselves, right, that'll be good if we get back. Whatever way we get back, it doesn't matter. Now, Neil Lennon made a, a, a wee statement there after the game at the weekend that, you know, if it had been in the box with the ball and the fans are there behind us, mm -hmm. that maybe that would have helped us. Well, unfortunately... We're not going to get any help for any fans the way it stands at the moment, status quo. There is no danger they're going to let us get back into those stadiums. No, no when this continues, Jim. I mean, there's a great point coming in from YouTube, uh, from Psycho Candy, who has joined us for several of our live bulletins. Yeah. So thanks for your support. First bolly mistake and everyone wants him out, but Griffiths makes so many and he's fine. It's either they both stay or they both go. This is the dilemma that Celtic are now in, Jim. Absolutely. Well, when we started the conversation, we said, well, we'll put Lee Griffiths to the side for the time being and we'll speak about a uh, Bongoli here. Now, two of them, two of them have done the same, same thing. Two of them have done the same thing. They've broke maybe the, the, the possibly the, the quarantine, whatever the quarantine rules were stated from the club. But what I'm saying is that Bongoli's left the country. Mm -hmm. And come in. That's a bigger issue. We're not saying that Lee Griffiths is without sin. Lee Griffiths has done what he's done, went to the family party and mixed with members of the family. That is a that's it's it's a different issue from leaving the country and coming back in and no declaring it. There's a dishonesty. Yeah. There's a dishonesty in what Bowling Golly's done as well. Yeah. And I think that's a big issue. Uh, keep the, the comments coming in. Kevin Graham is commenting to say, what Bolly has done is 100 times worse than Griffiths. There is no comparison in the two incidents. Bolly has to be sacked. So Jim, it's going back to the point you've made. We've got to look at both situations on their own merits, yep. for want of a better word, and deal with both of them. What I would say though, is we've got a game tomorrow night. It's on the back of a disappointing draw at Rugby Park. Yeah. where 
you know, as dramatic as the aftermath of that has been, we need a result tomorrow night. And we're going into the game with two first team players potentially not being available for inclusion. And it's due to behaviour, not due to a bad injury or a loss of form. Yeah. Now that's my biggest concern because if the game goes ahead, and let's hope it does tomorrow night, we're going to be without two first teamers. Did Greg Taylor pick up a strain at Rugby Park? Our first choice left back. Does Neil Lennon then have to look at the entire formation of the side going into a game? It scuppers so much of Neil Lennon's plans. But here's one of the most important things about the game, Paul. Right? Morale. Yes. We can have, have all the best players on the park, but see if the morale and the, the again, this togetherness isn't there. See if there's a split in the camp and there's ill feeling. It doesn't matter what formation you put out. It doesn't matter. They must be all in the same mindset. Mm -hmm. They must be all singing from the same hymn sheet and how they want to play. And they must be want to play, playing together. If they have, if they have all this at the back of their mind, knowing about this incident, or they knew that he was away, that there's a, there's a, there could be a break in the camp. Mm -hmm. We need the Celtic team it's morale to be better than it's ever been over the last nine years. And is that going to happen? Paul granted the game tomorrow night. Me personally, I pray and I hope it is. Well, let's hope so. I mean, we've got a lot of strong characters in that changing room. None more than Neil Lennon himself, Jim. So you would hope that that core of the Celtic team would be able to ensure that the morale is still high and where it should be. But it is difficult when two of the people who are standing shoulder to shoulder with you have let the entire side down. Absolutely, but Neil Lennon has got it in his bag and so have the backroom staff that they that they will help pull everybody back together. They'll, they'll sort out the, whatever problems are going to sort out. I, I sincerely hope they, they do. But I just, honestly, if I was uh, in there at the moment, I would be totally on a downer mm -hmm. of what my teammate has done to jeopardise me playing football for the, uh, uh, the the rest of the season. For the foreseeable. Cooley22 is commenting on Twitter via Periscope. Absolutely shocking. I hope the club make an example of them, especially after the Griff debacle. Uh, thanks for your comment. Keep them all coming in. We are live on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. To ask the question, what's the story, ball and goalie? Jamie Max 62 again via Twitter. Termination affects the budget, but Bolly should be sold immediately. Well, there's another thing. We've invested in this player. Mm -hmm. We've invested in him um, millions to bring him into the club. Yeah. And then obviously his wages and all of that. So if he was going to be out of favour and we sell him, he's a commodity. Uh, he's put us in a position where he may not be a commodity. He may not be an asset. He may not be because um, uh, who, who, what club would look at him, Paul? He'd be struggling after this. At this time? Yeah, with everybody he, he looking at their budgets, he'd be struggling to get aye. a club after this. Aye, he, he would be. Listen, Paul, what, what, what's very important here is you look at Bongongoli, the footballer, but you've got to look at him as the man as well. Mm -hmm. All right? We're all disappointed. He'll be disappointed. I'd like to think you'd be disappointed, but uh, uh, he he must be saying to himself, I've made a massive boo-boo here. I've made a massive mistake in what I've done. Where is my future? Is it at Celtic? Is it abroad? Is it with any other club in, in, in the UK? I don't actually think there's an honest answer. At the, at where we are sitting from at the moment for this guy I don't think I really don't think anybody would take him it would be a difficult sell let's be honest um, Jamie Mack 62 um, says that Griff is becoming a serial offender though and again I'm sure that when the club deals with him they'll be looking at everything that's been going on yep. uh, including obviously what Neil Lennon commented about in pre-season Connor, Anthony Connor uh, do you think as captain Scott Brown will be laying down the law to his teammates well Jim that goes back to a point you made we've got a strong dressing room we have a very strong dressing room and you would be looking at people like Callum McGregor and Scott Brown to try and pull their teammates through this difficult period. 
Hi, right, sorry, Paul, but my, my train of thought went away there. Um, we're looking at Scott Brown to, to you know, galvanise the side at this time. And hopefully we can go into tomorrow night's game, should it be played, um, with, with the, the right state of mind. Uh, Scott Brown will be doing everything he can, but, he, but I, I think that Nicola Sturgeon and her ministers will call now for Celtic games to be p- postponed. If this happens while well, we're actually on air, um, please comment because obviously we can see them coming in live. Yeah. There is a comment from Cycle Candy. I find it quite crazy that Nicola Sturgeon is about to address the nation about volleyball and goalie. Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought that would have happened? Well, she 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 is going to postpone the Celtic games. Well, if uh, that happens, I'm going, well, to, make, so I'm I'm going to make a statement here to you just now. She is going to postpone those Celtic games, and here's the thing as well: we have now given ministers. We have now given a certain size of the, a, a, the 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 establishment in Scotland to poke a finger at Celtic and do what some of them want to do is keep keep Celtic keep Celtic back and Bolland Goalie has just done that for us. He certainly has. I mean, obviously, I'm in the back of my mind, Jim. I'm always thinking about the welfare of the individual. He's been selfish. Yep. He has potentially put everybody at the club and everybody in the opposition side at risk. Yeah, definitely. Right? But I do think, you know, this th- this situation as we speak is so serious um, that it's going to put a lot of pressure on the individual as well. So although we're all very angry and, and you know, it's an anxious, intense time, I always always think about the individual and I think that's important so we will continually go through your messages uh, and obviously you know it's really it's universal condemnation of what Bollingoli has done but can I tell you something very important here Paul it's not been angry mm-hmm. it's disappointment no point in getting angry Ang- getting angry doesn't get you anywhere disappointment it's pure disappointment that we have but um, a it is breaking t- news, Jim. Aye, not Nic- it's Nicola Sturgeon, aye. Breaking news, Stephen Ray. Sturgeon has said she doesn't expect Celtic or Aberdeen to play over the next week. Yeah. Now, that is astonishing, not unexpected. This is how serious the issue has been, not only with the Aberdeen players uh, going to a pub and thinking that was acceptable. No. You've now got Ball and Golly creating a huge problem for Celtic Football Club. I've just been told uh, that officially there as well, Paul, that uh, the she's she's pulled it. So, where do we go for here, Paul? Where do we go for here? Well, the, the entire situation uh, around Scottish football starting was under scrutiny anyway. Yeah. And now, after these breaches, there is the potential that all games will stop and there'll be a football lockdown. Aye. There's a potential for that because they've given football clubs the opportunity Right at a cost, twice test in a week. We we all know it's been ramped up at a cost. The opportunity to get back to playing football, and as fans, we trust those who are given that opportunity, and they've they've actually betrayed that trust. So the clubs are going to suffer. They're going to suffer on a financial level as well, Jim. Yeah, it's a precarious time for every business globally. Yeah, Celtic are no different, and you've got the stupidity and the selfishness of. Volleyball and goalie to 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 thank for the announcement. Yeah. The announcement that Nicholas Sturgeon Definitely. has just made. A, a, a man taught me, uh, a good businessman taught me. He says, um, "Don't get put on the hook with letting somebody else off the hook." Now, what we have done there at Celtic with ball and goalie is now we have let. Uh, everybody else off the hook with us getting put in the hook we cannot we cannot going forward have any criticism of any other club nope we're now on the hook and it's Celtic's it's Celtic, the, the name hook. is Celtic that is is now you know that that's what's going to be affected is the name of Celtic Football Club Jim yep during a global pandemic yep who couldn't look after their players and make sure that they behaved responsibly? Celtic Football Club. Yeah. It's Celtic who will get the flack. And you're only as strong as your weakest player. Exactly. Now, I'm going to go through some of the reaction to what has just been announced. PMU 67, breaking news, Celtic and Aberdeen games off this week. 
And from Facebook, I am stunned with the action of some Celtic players. They are privileged individuals. They are, who are classed as elite athletes. I cannot see how anyone in their right mind would want to get on a plane where air is recycled and very difficult to social distance. It's happened. We're not going to be playing in the coming week. The thing I find weird is that Kilmanic are still allowed to play. So is it a punishment rather than... No, no, it's not punishment. No, no. Let, let's no... Uh, let's no... Uh, let's no say it's a punishment, Paul. Let's say it's a it's a fact that he's been out the country and uh, I don't know that the right uh, length of time before it kicks in, if you do have a showing the uh, uh, symptoms she, what she's doing is making an example no punishing she's making an example you as a club have not taken care of your own business Kilmarnock if they all clear uh, again and if there's no signs of any COVID within that club then why would you do that to Kilmarnock Kilmarnock's not committed any a, a, anything wrong here that's like saying uh with the Aberdeen, then Rangers should have been all restricted from travelling or from playing or whatever, and so on and so on and so on. We can't die. We can't diverse away from here, Paul. This is a Celtic problem. Mm -hmm. This is a Celtic problem. We it doesn't matter now about anybody else. It doesn't matter. We have got to sort this and come out publicly and show how we're we're going to sort it. Nicola Sturgeon, that's her. She's in. And by the way. She's in, and Nick, she, Nicola Sturgeon has to make that decision. She has, she has got to make that decision under the circumstances, as disappointing as it is. Yeah, but she, she, uh, she's is that uh, so? That's including tomorrow night. So the game's off tomorrow night. Over the next, over the next week. So there you go. It's the announcement. I'm now waiting for Celtic to make an announcement, which I'm pretty sure that the statement will be forthcoming. If it happens whilst we are live, please let us know and we can discuss that. Psycho Candy, again, thanks for your input via YouTube. You, far too many players taking chances over the past few weeks. This should be a wake-up call for everybody in Scottish football. The whole scenario, Jim, has been a shambles. Paul, we, we had lined up a, some young professional footballers to come on the show. Yes. Yeah. This week. This week. And we took the executive decision that we would not interview these players and we would not interview or have a discussion with anyone from a professional football club with, with the opinion that we don't want to jeopardise anyone from coming on the show mm -hmm. and talking and being in a, 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 an environment where... Let's say it could be, it may be, whatever they go, it could be vulnerable. But we did not want to take that chance. So we were only thinking of ourselves. We were thinking of the professional football clubs, the individuals and and the public, the public at home. So whilst us two are isolating and we've got everything in place here at a Celtic state of mind, we didn't want to jeopardise anyone. So we found that the right decision to cancel all interviews this week from professional football players. And anyone involved in the club. And anyone, anyone involved, involved, in, the involved in the club, Jim, and that's what we had to do. But, I mean, the comments are still coming in. DPM73 via Twitter. Implications for European game? Great question. We're, we're looking towards a European game here, Jim. Well, this, the, Island, uh, the, <laughs> the opposition... The opposition may have had to to forfeit the game if they couldn't have travelled or it was going to a a, a neutral venue. But th there was a, a chance that that game might not have been played. No, we've not got a leg to stand in. Jim, we're, we're all going home. We're sitting at home. Yeah. We, we've gone months without seeing family. Absolutely. Often vulnerable family. Yeah. Months. Yeah. And you're sitting at home and you're watching you know, things on Netflix or whatever it is. Yeah. You're sitting in the back garden. Everybody else has had to do it. Professional yeah. footballers at that level are privileged individuals. Privileged individuals. And Neil Lennon made the point during the week, training, home, games, home. Yeah. It's so simple. I mean, there, there can be absolutely no misunderstanding there. Yet, at, behind his back, he's got a player flying over to Spain. Yeah. And you know, the, the severity of that obviously is pretty clear now. We are no longer going to be playing tomorrow night. 
We're not going to be playing a game against St Mirren tomorrow night. We've got a game against uh, the other team who have been highlighted as being in breach against Aberdeen on Saturday. Celtic are now looking at a situation where the rest of the league are gathering points up. If you even want to just look at the sporting issues in that, and mm. we can't we can't play, we can't compete compete due to the behaviour, stupidity, selfishness, arrogance, a ball and goalie. Uh, l- listen, I hope the, the listeners and the viewers don't think that we're coming over as being over agitated or, uh, or, or or feeling harassed. We're not. But we're just so disappointed in the studio today, eh, Paul. But here's a question for you. Against Aber- against the uh, uh, when, when Aberdeen played Rangers last week, yes. And then the, when did the news break about the the Rangers team? That was the previous week. The, the pre season, the pre season uh, game. No, no, right. And then the Aberdeen. Then the Aberdeen. The game. following week. Yeah. So, so when when did the news break that they'd been in the the nightclubs? That was the following week after was that, was the, after the, the Rangers game. Yeah. Right. So, in that week, that's when he's went away. He's known that their players went to the restaurants, right? And that game's been uh, cancelled. Mm-hmm. So he still jumped in a plane. Yep. And broke every rule. Knowing what the consequences what the, were. Yes. Knowing what the consequences were. Yeah, absolutely. So that puts another state of mind on it. That puts another a, a, another no. another edge on it and saying, it really. It does. It puts it another really. slant on it. You know, it aggravates it. It yeah. aggravates the situation. Kevin Graham. Kevin was in the studio yesterday. He's yeah. now commenting via YouTube. And welcome back to the show, Kevin. I wonder how many other players are now fearing being exposed. You know, incidentally, you know, we've kind of mentioned that there will be others who are looking at this and thinking, you know, they've got to really toe the party line here. They've got to do as they're told. No one's treating them as children. We've all... We've all gone through a huge amount of change over the last few months, Jim, you know. Yeah. It's affected businesses, families, relationships. There's been people who have lost loved ones and not been able to, as a family, go and mourn that at the funeral. So all we're asking footballers to do, right, is yeah. is to isolate, to, to go and train, go home to the privileged lifestyles and just remain anonymous for the next couple of weeks, next couple of months, until advised otherwise. And they can't do it. Absolutely. So here here, 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 here you are at a professional club. The young players look up to the more established professionals. Mm-hmm. They look at what they do and they see what they do. Right. So they've got to teach the younger ones at the club that this is what we're expecting from you. This is how we want you to behave. This is how we want you to conduct yourself. We want you to go to training and go home. Come back to training, go home. Go and do what you've got to do with your family and make it all safe. Mm -hmm. Now, is there players out there, young players that may say, well, he's away doing that, all all this stuff, we really don't need to listen to it. Well, I'm sorry, to all the young players out there, you do need to listen. You do need to look and take on board what's been advised by the clubs, by your own individual club, by the government, by doctors. Is This is a serious matter. This is a serious matter for everyone in this country, mm-hmm. not just for sports people, for everybody. We've got to be careful and we've got to go about our business as if, as if it really does mean something, but to people out there, it just doesn't mean a damn, a damn thing. You know, Jim, it's bad enough if you or I were to go against the company regulations. These are people who are recognisable around the world. You know, there's no way you could jump on a plane, go to Spain, come back and nobody would notice you, you know. You know what, I'm amazed. It's incredible. No, I'm, you're right, Paul. I'm actually amazed that he's went to the airport, mm-hmm. he's jumped in the plane, He's went to wherever he's went to in Spain and came back without the club knowing. I know. Somebody yeah. must have seen him somewhere. It's appalling. It really is. Raffaello Pietro, disappointed in the number of fans lining up on social media who are keen to apportion blame to Lennon. I think Neil Lennon has been pretty clear. You know, he's been pretty clear in what he expects from his players. The yeah. responsibility is all on ball and golly here. 
Listen, everybody's entitled to your opinion, and that's what your show is all about, Paul. That uh, people can come on and express their opinion. They can they can have a say there, and um, if you put it out, you put it out. But the guy's entitled to his opinion. But Neil Lennon responsible? No chance. No chance. No chance. No chance. Livy sixty eight. Thanks for your comment via Twitter. We have the potential to be eight points behind come Sunday. Now that is just taking it right to the sporting level and you're absolutely right. This is the effect, this is the after effect of Bowling Golly's uh, behaviour. It's common sense, kids, that kids look up to these players and that's what they do. They need to start thinking about their club's fans, etc. Football players, players that play for Celtic are role models. Kids look up to them. Younger players within the club look up to them. Psycho Candy comments on YouTube. We are going to need to be incredible under pressure if we are playing an 11 points catch up. Absolutely crazy. These are the aftermath. This is the aftermath of Bolingoli's uh, behaviour. Cairn Celtic, if we play the qualifier next week with no games, we're at a big disadvantage over this. I think Celtic are already disadvantaged. Let's have a look at Declan McConville who has contributed previously um, to a Celtic state of mind. The absolute latest, the Celtic v Rekovic, must be completed by is Friday the 21st of August. If this cannot be done, the game will be forfeited by the club who cannot field a team. Mm. So that is a, a good bit of input from Declan. And we have... Various messages coming through, Celtic fans coming through from all over the world and uh, hello to you all, hello to Lindsay who says hello from Facebook and uh, Daniel McGregor, Rangers, Aberdeen and now incidents with Griffiths and Bolling Golly. The whole of Scottish football has left let it sell down, furious at the lack of responsibility and professionalism. We have mentioned that Scottish football has dealt with this shambolically. Shambolically. Uh, absolutely, but there, there's... Uh a, a, a wee message that's come in as well hopefully I pronounce this correctly Humza Youssef, operational matter for Border Force and Police Scotland, I support whatever enforcement action they deem necessary and the manager, another manager uh, from the, the Scottish Premier League if mistakes continue to happen, there's no doubt about it that the football season will be cancelled, well that that wee message here, if mistakes, I don't agree that it's a mistake. No, it's, it's not. It's not a mistake. It's not a mistake, Jim. No, it's no mistake. Um, and um, that this is a, a responsible, a responsible a person who's taking this action to go and leave the country and come back in again. That's not a mistake. That's a decision. We all make mistakes in life, but that's a decision that was selfish premeditated to selfish. book a flight travel to an airport it's premeditated a mistake is something that happens without thought you know? so Declan McConville Ball and Goalie Paul. would have gone before the Aberdeen situation as that news didn't break till the Thursday Ball and Goalie would have been away Monday or Tuesday that's academic it's an aggravator yeah. it's an aggravator to the situation that He's Celtic Celtic, now, player. Celtic now finds himself in a very difficult situation yeah Jim, and we're up against it. We're up against it before this happens. You know, because when you think about the restrictions that are already in place in, re in relation to fans going through the gates, Celtic and loads of other clubs are looking at a huge loss of revenue and all they asked for was a certain level and standard of behaviour in their players. It's the same level and standard of behaviour they expect from us every time we go and watch Celtic. Or wear the green and white hoops. Aye. And we do the club proud wherever we go. And these players who have breached that have let us all down. Absolutely. Paul, Celtic were up against it before the season kicked off. Celtic will be up against it through the whole of the season. These players have got to understand as well. And this is me pinning my colours to the mast here. Celtic will be up against it because there's people who don't want to see Celtic achieving 10 in a row. There's people who don't want to see Celtic as a club progressing, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. We have just fueled them 
and they are all doesn't matter. They don't care if football's cancelled this this season. There's certain elements who will not care if football's cancelled as long as Celtic don't succeed. Fact. Well. What's the story, ball and golly? I think it's loud and clear. Celtic supporters are furious. They're angry. We're missing games. We're losing ground in the league. This is the Celtic State of Mind Bulletin. We will go live every day to take your thoughts on YouTube, Twitter and Facebook. The quality and the success of this show is down to the listeners and those who get involved. We are live all season and let's hope we can get back to looking at the next game as soon as possible. All that's left for me is to thank you all for joining in and to thank Jim for joining me on a Celtic State of Mind.